Hey there again, Board Game Brody here with Let's Table It, where we get games to the table. This time, it's Wizards and Company by Sinister Fish Games. This is a battle royale where players are choosing monsters to be placed in the octagon to battle with everyone else. All those still standing will gain gems, and the player with the highest strength from the combination of all their monsters will then be able to pick the first artifact to gain some points from it and more abilities. And why is this? Well, the head necromancer is dead and his dungeons lie unguarded, even though they're still full with gems and artifacts, ripe for the taking. There is just one problem. These vaults can only be breached by a wizard. What's that? You're a wizard? Well, good then. You need a crew. Oh, well, you already have your hench persons and your minions already? Oh, good to go. Ten of the meanest beasts, bullies, and brutes I see. Now, just remember, you're not the only one going down there. You know, rival wizards are trying to go that down as well, so you need to be sneaky and strategic because you want to make sure that you take the most treasure that you can. Each player will have a deck of 10 cards. You can use the recommended starting cards, totally random 10 cards, or you can follow some suggestions to make partially random deck of 10 cards. Either way, each and every player will have the same 10 cards just in their chosen color. There are a number of octagon dungeon boards that will be used and the total numbers equal to the number of players playing in the game with the icons on them indicating which ones are used for those numbers of players that you have. Each dungeon has two artifacts that match the letters on them and an enchantment tile placed there as well. Depending on how many players in the game, you will have a set number of enchantment tiles placed in a stack and when they are gone, you know not to reset any more dungeons and it's the timer for the game. Each player will also have a gem multiplier tile in their color, a, a player aid card, and a scoring reminder card, in addition to their deck of 10 monster cards, which should be shuffled. The first player will then start by drawing two cards from their deck and place it into their hand, and they also will start with two cursed gems. The second player will draw two cards and have one cursed gem. The third player will draw three cards and have one cursed gem, and the fourth player will draw three cards and they don't start with any cursed gems. Cursed gems are bad in this game and will cause you to remove other gems at the end of the game. Plus, the player with the most will receive a three point penalty. So that's a negative three points. You don't want that. Anyways, the first player will start and follow three steps. And then in a clockwise directions, players will take turns until the end game is triggered. And the first is placement. You must place one or two creature cards from your hand and place them into one or two dungeons. When doing this, you can place them face up or face down, and when face up, you will be able to use their placement effect if they have one, but when placed face down, they will lose this placement effect. But others won't know what to expect when they get revealed, so it's a surprise. If you are placing two monster cards, only one can be placed face down, and only one card can be placed in each entrance. You can see not all edges of the tiles have entrances, so make sure that you look, and if they have stairs, then you know that's an entrance. Cards can only be placed on unoccupied slots, and if all entrance slots are filled, then the dungeon is full and a battle will occur in step three. Later in the game, you can gain artifacts, and you can place these equipment artifacts with a card either face up or face down with your monster. But the equipment tile is always left face up. If you forget what other cards you have placed down when you're placing other cards and they're down, you can always look back to your face down cards at any time. Step two is draw cards. If you place no cards because you didn't have any or one card face up, you will draw two cards from your deck. If you place down one card face down or two cards in different dungeons, then you will draw one card from your deck. And if you place two cards but in the same dungeon, then you will not draw any cards on this turn. The last step, step three, is the battle step. If no dungeons are full, then you will skip this step, but if there is a full dungeon, then ding, 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 yes, the active player takes the battle token and the battle begins. If two dungeons are full, then that player decides which one to start with and then we'll do the other one after. This battle step consists of its own four steps. All face down cards are flipped over and turned face up. Then starting with the card to the right of the statue and proceeding clockwise, all creatures with the action phase icon can perform their action. 
Sometimes this is eliminating other players or using the stun ability. And when eliminated, the card is removed and put to the bottom of that owner's deck. There is no discard pile in this game. A stunned creature is removed and placed back into the owner's hand. And if you are eliminated or stunned prior to activating your effect, then you don't get to activate your effect because you're not on there anymore. If they have a global effect, then it stops working if they are removed. And all of these effects are mandatory. Even if you have other creatures in the same octagon, they will still get triggered on them. After all these actions are performed again one at a time, starting with the card to the right of the statue, then for each creature still remaining, you will gain any gem shown at the entrance of that creature. And if you have an artifact or an enchantment, you might have an effect which will be triggered or activated at this time as well. The player who has the battle token then takes the enchantment tile, which is worth one point at the end of the game, but also has an effect that can now be used. Then artifacts are awarded. You will add up your total strength from all of your creatures still present there. And the player who has the highest chooses an artifact that they would like to take. And then the second highest player chooses the other artifact. In a two player game, if you are the second highest, you can only take the second artifact if your strength is higher than zero and within three points of the winner's strength. If this doesn't happen, then the artifact is just discarded. Ties are broken by turn order, starting with the player with the battle token. And if there is only one player left in the dungeon, then that player can take both of the artifacts. Each player then takes back their cards from that dungeon and orders them how they would like, and then they place them face down at the bottom of their deck to potentially use again. Then if there are any remaining enchantment tiles face down in the pile created during setup, then a new one comes out. But you'll first flip over the dungeon tile, place the new enchantment tiles on it, in addition to the two new artifacts matching their letters. Then the next player continues their turn. If there is no more enchantment tiles left, then you will remove that dungeon tile and continue playing. Once there are no more dungeons left, scoring is then performed, and the player with the most cursed gems will lose three points. And then for each cursed gem, each player will have to discard another gem with that cursed gem, matching them together and losing them both. Players who have any cursed gems remaining because they don't have other gems to be able to get rid of them will gain negative one point for each of those. Then players will take and make sets of different colored gems and they will gain points according to how many they have. One point for one, two points for two, four points for three, six points for four, nine points for five, and 12 points for having six of the same colored gem. It also can be possible to make more than one set of a gem color. Then artifacts are worth points. Gold artifacts are worth seven points each. Silver ones are worth five points each. And the bronze are worth three points each. Each enchantment is worth one point, and the player with the most points then wins the game. And well, that's how you play Wizards & Co. by Sinister Fish Games. It's a hand management game by, you know, placing out the right combination of cards to fight and then trying to gain the rewards that you want to take, you know, their effects and become even better to fight better, but also gaining the points for them as well. Entrances to the dungeons have gems listed. Some are clear and they have nothing and some have cursed gems. So you are trying to figure out, you know, how to position yourself in this battle because, you know, there is a turn order in which effects get triggered before others do. But then you also want to, you know, go to a slot where you want that gem or possibly can gain it. This makes those empty slots, you know, less valuable and the cursed gem even less enticing unless a player has an ability or a reason to go there, which could be the case as well. There are also different dungeons to choose to play into, so you want to choose which ones to compete for, maybe all of them at different times. You'll be making choices with placing your cards up or down to let others know what they are facing against or or hiding that information so they don't know so it's a surprise but you will also maybe you know gain an effect for which you you know give other people that information for to do that effect you also need to consider future turns and how many cards that you will be uh, picking up to continue on one card face up will still give you two cards but two cards in the same dungeon can be powerful but won't let you draw any more cards 
And then as you play, you can see, you know, what cards fit with what's already there. Maybe you focus on a different dungeon until one is resolved if you don't think that you have a chance to do well in it. You will need to choose when to make powerful moves and choose when you want to hold tight. Now, you will always also want to read and know what artifacts and enchantments are up for grabs in each of the dungeons. This is mainly for strategy so that you can use those abilities and do things that others won't be able to do because you have those new abilities. But the main thing you should also see and know in this game and why it was designed is the effects on the cards. Some trigger when face up, when initially placed down, kicking others or, or stunning others. Others have effects when the action phase occurs and the battle begins, or when you collect your gems, or even some that trigger with the effects when returned back to your hand. So there is a bunch of different combinations that you will see, and you will need to also understand that other players can also do any of those effects on those cards as well. Now you should shuffle your deck and you know these cards are coming out at different times so timing is is really key in this game. As you keep on playing the game you will learn more and more with you know the cards effects and other cards and you know there is like a synergy type thing happening to make a well-balanced game here as you know some will defend against others and others are better to play at a certain time. You will learn the best time to play the cards. But really, players will be targeting each other, especially if they think that you are most likely to win the game. Then they're going to go after you. There are 22 possible cards to use for each player and 10 are used for each game. So you will be able to you know, find different combinations and experiences as you play with different cards each time you play the game. The components are good, very thick cardboard for the dungeon tiles and, and also for the artifacts and enchantments matching the thickness there. Fun wooden gems, many different colors here and shapes. They're nice to, to use and play with standard cards, and the art on the cards matches a fun and fantasy game that this definitely is. No problems with icons, and the rulebook also has a section that addresses each of the effects, so if you're unsure what to do or what happens, then you can look for the specifics of a certain action in the rulebook. Ultimately, this is a great battle royale card game, playing in the octagon using your card's abilities and gaining additional effects to stay alive and gain more and more gems and tiles that are worth points to score at the end of the game. Again, this is Brody with Let's Table It, where we get games to the table. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We are working hard to bring to you videos like this one so you know if these games are ones that you want to get to your own table.